Hello, adventurers. I want to take a moment to tell you that all our content can now be found uninterrupted and commercial-free on Apollo Plus. Apollo Plus is a subscription-based service that enhances your audio fiction experience with ad-free access to your favorite shows and exclusive content, while at the same time supporting us all as creators to keep bringing you quality content. Please take a moment to check out Apollo Plus at apollopods.com or download the app in your Google or Apple app stores. Again, that's Apollo Plus, your new home for quality audio fiction. Hello, adventurers, and welcome back to our Season 5 finale. Thanks to our patrons, Ryan Donnelly, Lanny Flanagan, Jolene Fresquez, Haley Munoz, Daniel Nichols, Brian Dowling, and to you, our dear listeners, for helping keep the adventure going this season. Before we get started, I have Ariana with me, who played the voice of the child Cordelia in the prologue. Well, Ari, how are you? I am good. So, what episode was your favorite, and why? It was probably season one, episode eight, because when Cordelia remembered what happened to her parents. That's a little sad, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, in this episode, they're going back home. Are you kind of excited to see what will happen? Yes, I am. Well, let's not keep everyone waiting. Let's see. What are they up to? Oh. Oh, look, Ari. Seems like Dabry is deep in thought, also remembering something from a long time ago. Doll of Dragons, Season 5, Episode 9, Home Again. Dabria saw her hands, smaller, younger. She looked around at the stone work in the hall, the work of kobolds. Smells of food cut through the musty smell of filth and ash. She was in her memories again, back in that mess hall in Enrook. Her face had matured in just a few short years, but encompassed a lifetime of pain. She was 19 now. She remembered this day. Her hands curled around the tin bowl as she slowly stepped with the 20 or so other young officers in the line, step by step. The kobolds scurried as they put out portions of crusty bread that smelled of some cheap lemony spice and salt. This was used to mop up the watery soup of unknown origins. Seemed to be some kind of meat today. Maybe some root vegetables, she hoped. Some scattered dark green wisps of grasses were a treat every now and then from the barren volcanic land surrounding Enrook. Someone must have brought those in, she thought. She thought about what it must look like where they come from. What the sun looks like. Was it like in the books she had read? Step up! Bull! Move! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Move! You! Oh, yeah, sorry. <sighs> Go! The kobold cooks looked at Dabria. There was a respect they had for the young officer. She wasn't cruel like the others. Watch it, freak! <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. 
Did <laughs> Yeah, Una. You can't really tell the future, can you? Leave, leave me alone. <laughs> they treat you like you're special. But there's nothing special about you, is there? Just a worthless freak. <laughs> Look at her back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you smell like... Mm. The chamber pots. <laughs> uh, ugly, too. No wonder you don't talk to us. I think I want that necklace, though. Give it to me. Oh. Now, freak. Ow! You're hurting me! Stop! <laughs> Look, boy, it's her mommy. <laughs> you don't scare me, Dabria. Your freak magic is nothing. Stop! Freak magic from a freak god. Rassler stepped forward and pointed at the goat's horn hanging around Dabria's neck. What is this? Some sort of horn? God would use a horn. <laughs> her cruel mouth twisted in a grin under her serpent-like green eyes. She wore her hair, tied back in a tight black braid, kept close to the scalp. Rassler was stronger than Dabria, and she liked to show it. She was a powerful wrestler and had snapped the elbow of another officer while practicing earlier that same day. Dabria had remembered her laughing as she left her crumpled opponent lying in the ring. Hmm. <laughs> Don't. Yes. Stop. You know what? I changed my mind. I want this necklace instead. Boys, you can have the freaks. Stay away from me. Please. God! What? <laughs> Power erupted from Dabria's outstretched hands as Rassler's flesh was ripped away in a matter of seconds. Leaving her as a standing, perfect skeleton. The empty sockets were momentarily dark before small blue dead lights erupted like candle flames. The entire mess hall looked on frozen in shock and horror. Come, Rassler. Sit with us. As the skeleton turned its head slowly towards its new master. Dabria. They're in a wagon, traveling south across a sandy desert road. Here, take some water. You you dozed off for a bit. Oh, uh, thank you. So, I made my first note in this new journal. Listen. <clears throat> uh. We shipwrecked, and then we made our way to the northern coast of Kerr. We bought a wagon. I, I bought the wagon. Yes. Yes, of course. Of course this is your wagon. And, um... Oh, I'm driving it. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, and... Vash is... driving it. There. Okay, uh, then I say, and now we are traveling in a wagon south. Wow, that's one way to put it. What? What do you mean? I mean... That's the facts. Shipwrecked, got a cart, and we're in it. That's pretty boring. We ate floating garbage for four days. Yeah, I thought you were writing a hero's tale. That's why you bought the journal. Uh, yeah? So? Yeah, well, Zorin, you are a great storyteller. Write like you talk. Huh. Hey. Thanks. Zoran looked out of the window of the cart, thinking of the past few weeks. Maybe they weren't as bland as he had recorded. It took a moment to remember some of the extra details. Floating on the sea, he remembered showing them that a rogue wave was actually some huge creature under the waves. He thought of the sunsets as they took turns paddling, and the joy of catching a few fish as they made their way into the northern port of Sierra. This port was popular with the Minotaur of the North and one of the last stops for the Southlands trade route. When winter came, 
This port would shut down except for an occasional black skiff from Ingerboja. He jotted a few of these thoughts down to capture a rough outline of their travels. He had bought the journal to share his stories with Benedict when they returned. His brown eyes looked up for a moment and saw something familiar. Oh, wow. Sophie, look. Is that the mountain leading to the mine? Yes, but it's... Sophie, it's our old home. Over that hill. Sophie stood in the flat area now overrun with familiar sweet-smelling grasses and looked around. Her hand absent-mindedly sought out the frayed threads of the bracelet on her wrist. The echoes of square buildings that had once stood were scattered about. Some rough corners of houses stood up or the occasional chimney. That was all that was left of their childhood home, of Alanat Khan. Let's head into town and check the Howling Mountain Inn. I bet it's a lot easier to get one of those pastries now. Might be one over there if we look. A bit stale. Maybe overcooked. Not funny, Zane. Shut your trap. Hey, it was my town too. I... Uh, sorry. I didn't mean I... I know what you were trying to do, and I... I can appreciate you trying to cheer me up, but this time I... I just need a moment. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Me too. The sun above was warm, and the sky cloudless. The only survivor of this empty ghost town was the familiar gentle breeze, tossing the tall grasses that had come to claim the land over the last twelve years. Closer to the center of town, the remains of the building showed charred bricks from that long ago fire. Those buildings outside of the center, such as their homes, were largely made of wood, leaving less of a footprint on the ground after they burned. Um, hey. Hey, I... Say, would you mind um, walking with me a bit? Slowly, they walked together. Zorn put his arm over the powerful shoulders of Sophie. The rest of the group was headed up to the mine to search for clues, giving the two survivors of this small town time to make their peace. Sure would be great if there was one of those pastries left. Really? Is that all you guys thought about back then? <laughs> well... No, actually. Like what else? We were all going to be pirates. You remember? Yes. Zane talked about that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and with me, he liked to talk about you. <laughs> well, that's a little embarrassing. Well, I like to talk about all you guys, too. You know, we had a good time, didn't we? Growing up? I mean, it wasn't easy, and... And I'm... I'm sorry, Zorin. Zorin thought about his father, and how hard he was on him. But there was a light in that memory. There's no mistaking that my home life was hard, but... I had you guys. You were everything to me. Hey. Thanks for always being there for me, Sophie, and... Thank Zane for me, too, will ya? <clears throat> I mean, even though he ditched us for a few years. <laughs> okay. Who's making the bad jokes now? What? You aren't gonna tell him to shut up? 
<laughs> hey, speaking of chosen family, you remember Rickover Bear Charger? Yeah, yeah, he was uh, head of the dwarves at the mine, right? Uh, him, Olakul, Whittakin? Yes, after my dad died, he was always making sure we were okay. They were pretty close, everyone told me. I was pretty young, like five, when Cardolin would be gone on a bounty or whatever. <laughs> he would check in on me, too. He gave me this. From under the worn and beaten breastplate, Sophie drew up a simple silver chain, upon which was a bear's paw, sculpted out of a matching blue-tinted silver. Bear Charger Clan. He said I was a member regardless of blood, that he and the clan would always watch over me. And the day all hell broke loose, Zane and I heard them talking about the mine. That's why we wanted to go up there. Zoran thought of something. Something she just said. Hmm. Um, hey Sophie. You know what, I'm... I'm done saying goodbye to this place. Me too. It was a great place to grow up in, but time's wasting. Let's find out what we can about this Strath place and get moving. The tunnels that snaked their way under the Obsidian Fortress were small and claustrophobic. A dark, unlit network maze that led outside. These ancient sewers were not in use anymore. That's what Bumbub's map showed, and she used these to escape. It's full moon. That's a pretty powerful sign. Thank you, moon. Watch over me, please. Cordelia made her way through the deep blue-green shrouded pine trees to the east, away from the fortress. Her eyes were well accustomed to the darkness of the tunnels, and the almost full waxing moon in the clear starry sky was welcome for her to check her footing in the same carpet of dry pine needles. Each step brought the aromatic scent of pine and dust to her senses. The forest was surprisingly alive in the shadow of the fortress with the sounds of gentle creatures like squirrels and bats, she told herself. Nothing to be afraid of. Keep moving. Need to get out of these trees for the ritual. Keep moving. Just keep moving. She was moving with a hushed urgency, as swiftly as this young fire mage could navigate the dimly lit forest without making too much noise. She had to get a message to Sophie, and she was going to use dragon magic to do it. She felt the old worn friendship bracelet that Sophie had given her and found herself silently saying goodbye as she continued her descent into the forest. As if stepping out of time and memory itself, the hot dust blew across the dirt road, whipping up in small clouds that stung the eyes and cheek. The arid smell of dry, cracked leather came from the various tools in the old mine cart. As Zoran and Sophie looked in, remembering. Benedict was so scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> I thought he was going to freak out for sure on Zane, but <laughs> Zane, he just kept on chewing that grass seed. Always. That guy cracked me up. I mean, he was only... Hey, you two, come over here. We found a few things inside the mine. From the familiar mouth of the mine emerged Vash, Dabria, Una, and Scottmere. Scottmere was carrying a small wrapped burlap bundle, and Vash had a small piece of parchment. Zorin and Sophie jogged over to a flat, three-foot-high sandstone rock that was now being treated as a table for the objects as they all looked on. Hey, what, what's all this? Well, seems Una's friend left a bunch of clues lying around the world for some reason. This book is another one. 
It seems she came back here with Deki on the back. I'd figure as much if they were such tight pals. I don't remember her at the tree, though. She wasn't there. Her journal says that after she couldn't find his son in town, she came up here to retrieve the crown. The crown that... The crown that... Oh, the crown that Palace got from you all. Huh. Benedict told me. Good work. I was 12! Well, Zane was. Man, I don't see why you thought I wasn't funny, because this is all really awful comedy. Shut it. Regardless, the crown ended up in the hands of Lord Pallas. I've seen it. And it's what gives him the unquestionable power with the dragons. They all believe he's some sort of chosen one of the Dragon Queen. You all took the crown before she could get it. Hmm. Anyway, uh, here. It says the path to the Tomb of Stroth goes northeast from here, through the northern part of Bloodwood Mountains, and into the Northlands. Apparently, there's an ancient staff of the dead they were seeking. Some source of great power. Okay. Well, what's that bundle of joy Scott Mare brought out? It's some mining clothes, but they look bloodstained. And here's a pickaxe that was next to them. They were back in the walls behind the mine, but they don't look ancient. Do either of you know who Torsten is? Suddenly, Sophie felt her mind pull from the inside, jarring her Sophie? Zorin grabbed her before she fell flat on her back and eased her to the ground. I'm okay. On the other side of the world, Cordelia was holding the burning end of the friendship bracelet as it was being consumed by the ritual's fire. She didn't have much time. You all need to split up. No! There's no time, Sophie. Just trust me. Wait, Wait why are... We were taken prisoner to the Obsidian Fortress, but we escaped, so... How? Just don't worry about us. Dekion, Squib, and Nightblade are coming your way to stop all of What? Oh my gods, we have to go! Just, Just do, do what, what you can, can to help the cause, and, and we, we will do, do the same. same. I, I love, love you, my friend. friend. Thank you. Love you too. We'll meet back at the keep. But all Sophie heard now was silence. She felt the bracelet on her wrist and winced at some hidden unknown regret before setting up. Uh, Sophie? We've got to go! Dekion and his goons are coming our way! If we split up, we can cover more ground, getting supporters. She tells me for this journey, I should just take my dark sister with me. And you are all then free to find allies to fight this war. Are you sure? Yes. There's no reason for you all to travel with us from here. This is our path. Sophie, the dwarves are to the east in Bloodwood. They would make powerful allies. Hey, if the Bear Charger clan escaped from here, they would likely go back to the Great Forge in Bloodwood. I want to find them too. I've got some old business contacts. To the south in Port Lafour with the elves. But... I've never been. Could use your help, Zoran. Well, that could be interesting. Seeing what's happened to our old stomping grounds. Hey, we could see if the army is still in control or not. By the way, what was the name you said about these clothes and the pickaxe? Torsten? What? You, you know that name? Torsten? That's my dad. It... It, it is... Dabria's hand glowed with a single golden light as she held it over the worn clothing. Her eyes were closed. He saw him. He saw Lord Pallas hide the crown in that ancient mine shaft. Pallas saw him and he was killed. Murdered. Murdered by Lord Pallas when you first arrived here, Zorin. He hid the clothing. He hid the pickaxe. He made it look like... A mining accident. I know this story. A, a drunken mining accident. Sophie turned away. I was told he had been drinking and went into the mine without his protective clothing. There was an accident. <laughs> That's when Palace became the Justicar. 
He murdered your father and took his job. By the gods, I'm sorry. Epilogue. Cordelia snuffed out the campfire as she stood up on the rocky plateau. A brisk breeze from the mountains blew her ivory dress in the direction she was to be going. Into mysterious Shikara, far to the west. As Lamprey had directed, the flattening desert lay before her. And in the distance, the soft lights of a settlement were no more than a day or so away, she would guess. She smiled softly and steeled herself for the hot sun that was sure to come. Una smiled at Dabria as they stepped along the northern road together, graced by jade pine trees and mosses. The chill of the air made her draw her cloak in a little tighter. Zorn and Vash saw the blue water along the coast leading to Port Lafour. The smell of the surf hundreds of feet below mixed with the calls of the seabirds. Both mariners smiled at each other as they took in the calm day. Skamir and Sophie stepped on the cracked, broken, rust-red earth of Bloodwood. The huge mountain harboring the great forge itself loomed in the distance, leading each other with the hope of reclaiming their lost family. The two unlikely siblings stepped side by side towards it. Far away in the northlands of Wolfling, Benedict walked with Karn, carrying a stag's horn in one hand. They looked at each other and nodded as they entered the deep black night of the Shattered Lands, both of them becoming increasingly aware of the approaching full moon.
appearing in this episode. The Cook, Byron Thompson. Cordelia the Fire Mage, Jolene Fresquez. Dabria, the Death Cleric, J.D. Rose. Kobold, Kitchen Staff. Mike Atchley, Barrett Giant, and Jolene Fresquez. Scottmere, the Dwarven Berserker, Colton Jansen. Sophie, the Swordmaster, Sarah Jenkins. Una, the Sage, Becky Atchley. Vash, the Archer, Barrett Giant. The Young Dark Army Officer, Patrick Mendelson. Young Rassler, the Bully, Nikki Richardson. Young Una, Melanie Petri. Zane the Assassin, Storm S. Cohn. Zorin, the Swashbuckler, Cody Miller. Keldor the Narrator, Mike Atchley. Thank you for joining us this season for Dice Tower Theater's Dawn of Dragons. Please join us in thanking our magnificent cast for their performance. And their full list can be found in the show notes. The story isn't over, dear adventurers. I'm proud to say Season 6 is greenlit and in production. You can look forward to that coming your way by the beginning of 2024. Stay tuned for some special post-season episodes and some news of some other upcoming shows from right here at Good Hand Productions. Until next time, dear adventurers, stay safe and remember the oath. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Okay, so we're going to bring this down here. That's a lot of names you have to say. It is a lot of names. I appreciate that. Uh.